Hello, this is Mr. Field, and this is my video on how to balance chemical equations. Now, before going any further, make sure you're comfortable with uh, chemical symbols and formulas and what those mean. And if you're not sure, uh, just check out this video here. So in this video, we're going to start off talking about the conservation of mass, because that's the underlying principle behind why we balance equations. Then we'll look at what balance equations are, how to balance equations, and then we'll finally we'll look at advanced balancing tricks. Right, so... And let's start with the idea then of conservation of mass. So conservation of mass is a really important principle that says mass must be conserved in a chemical reaction. But what does that mean? What that means is that the total mass of reactants at the start of a reaction must be the same as the total mass of products produced by the reaction. Now, the reason why that must be the, must be the case is because if they weren't the same, it would either mean that atoms were vanishing or appearing out of nowhere and neither of those things is possible so mass must be conserved to make sure that every atom that was there at the start of a reaction is still there at the end of the reaction so the idea of conservation of mass leads to the concept of equations being balanced or unbalanced now equations must be balanced what that means is they must have equal numbers of each type of atom on each side um, and if they don't do that, then we don't have conservation of mass and something's gone wrong somewhere. So if we start off looking at this example, this is how we make HCl, which is um, hydrogen chloride. So we make it from H2, hydrogen gas, and Cl2, chlorine gas, and we make HCl. Now, if we look at this, we've got two hydrogens and two chlorines on the left, but only one hydrogen and one chlorine on the right. So in this example, mass is not conserved. So this reaction is unbalanced, or this equation is unbalanced, and that means that this equation is wrong. So how do we balance it? What we do is we add some numbers in front of our species that we call coefficients. Um, and I've drawn them in red here just to make it extra clear. So what we do in this case is we just put a big two in front of the HCl. And so now that means that rather than making one HCl, we're making two of them. And you can see if we do that, now we've got two hydrogens on the left and two on the right and two chlorines uh, on the right and two on the left. And so now it's balanced. Now mass has been conserved. So let, let's look at another example. This is how to make aluminium oxide. So we take an aluminium uh, and some oxygen and we make Al2O3. But again, you can see we've got one aluminium on the left and two on the right. We've got two O's on the right, uh, left, sorry, and three on the right. So to balance this, I can add some coefficients. It's a lot more complicated this time. I'm going to have a four a three and a two, but now you can see that the number of atoms uh, on the left and right are balanced, and so therefore mass has been conserved. So the big question now is, how do we balance equations? What's the trick to doing this? And that's what the next few slides are about. We're gonna work through some examples. Let's look at our first example of how to balance an equation. This is making water. So we start with H2, which is hydrogen, and O2, which is oxygen, and we make H2O, which is water. Now, the first thing people often say when they balance the equations, can't we just, can't we just put an H2O2 like that? that? That would be balanced, but H2O2 isn't water, so we can't do that. So let's just get rid of that too um, before it confuses us. So we can't balance the equations by um, changing the little numbers. So what we are going to have to do is figure out where to put our coefficients. So let's start by drawing boxes around each of our substances. Now, the point of these boxes is to remind us that we can't change anything that's in the box. So I just put all these boxes around like that. Then what I do is I'm going to unpack my formulas. This really helps me to see how many of each of the atoms there are. So H2 just means two H's. So I draw two H's, O2 means two O's, so I draw two O's like that, and H2O is two H's and one O like that. Okay, so now I'm going to do a tally chart where I count the number of each of the atoms on each side of the equation. So on the left, I've got two hydrogens, so two tally. On the right, I've got two hydrogens, so that looks all good at the minute. What about my oxygens? I've got two on the left and only one on the right because it's h 2 O with no number. So I need to think now about adding a coefficient. Okay, so the coefficient I'm going to add is a big two in front of that H2O. Now, why is that? If I have two H2Os, let's go back to the unpack stage, two H2Os, I've now got another one of these with another two H's and one more O. So I can update my O tally. So now that's two, but I've also got to update my H tally. So now it's four. So the O's are all good, but the H's aren't. So 
we've done our tally so we need to go then back to our coefficients so what coefficient do I put where well I know I need more hydrogens over here somewhere so the way to get more hydrogens is to put a coefficient 2 in front of the H2 update my tally again uh, so up, unpack it again and then update my tally now I've got four hydrogens on the left and now that's all good because that is now balanced so the balanced equation is this um, 2H2 plus O2 making 2H2O Let's look at a second example. Um, this one is sodium carbonate plus HCl making NaCl plus H2O plus CO2. Looks really complicated, but let's take our same approach. So we're going to start with our boxes. So put a box around everything there. Remember the boxes tell us that we can't change the things that are in the boxes. Okay. And once I've done the boxes, I'm going to unpack by just writing down the number of atoms in each thing. So Na2CO3 is Na, NaCOOO. Um, We've got H and Cl there. And then on the right, we've got Na and Cl. Um, for the H2O, we've got H, H and O. And for the CO2, we've got C, O and O. So that's my unpacking. Then I do my tally chart. So I've got Na's, C's, O's, H's and Cl's. So I've got lots of things here, but let's just be, be uh, methodical about it. So on the left, I've got two Na's. On the right, I've got one. On the left, I've got one C, uh, and on the right, I've got one. On the left, I've got three O's, one, two, three, and on the right, I've got three O's, one, two, three. On the left, I've got one H, on the right, I've got two, and on the left, I've got one CL, and on the right, I've got one CL. So now we need to think about our coefficients. Now, let's have a little look at what is unbalanced. At the moment, our sodium is unbalanced. Um, our hydrogen is unbalanced, but everything else is balanced. So I don't have enough sodium on the right, so I'm going to put a coefficient 2 here, because now, if I unpack again, I've now got two sodium chlorides. And so now we're all good. Let's update the tally. So I've got two NAs. I've also got another chlorine, so I'm going to update that. Okay, so now our sodium is good, but now our H is unbalanced still, and our Cl is unbalanced still. So, which coefficient can I update to affect both the H's and the Cl's on the left? Well, what I can do is just put a two here uh, in front of HCl, and now. If I unpack that one, so now I've got another HCl, update my tally, another H, another Cl. Now we're all good. We've got two sodiums left and right, two carbons, three oxygens, two hydrogens, and two chlorines. So my balanced equation is going to be Na2CO3 plus 2HCl makes 2NaCl plus H2O plus CO2. Okay, so let's look at the next example. This is aluminium and chlorine making aluminium chloride. I'm going to start by doing my boxes to remind us we can't change these things. So box, box, box. Then we do the unpacking. So on the left, I've got one aluminium. The Cl2 is ClCl. And the AlCl3 is AlCl3CLCl. So let's do my tally chart. I'm going to leave a bit of space um, for reasons that will become clear in a second. So I'm going to go Al. Um, Cl on the left I've got one, on the right I've got one, C chlorines on the left I've got two, on the right I've got three. So I need more chlorines on the left so what I do is I put a coefficient two in front, I unpack again so now I've got two Cl2 so put another two chlorines there and then I update my tally so put another two in that tally. Now you can see there's not enough chlorines on the right so what can I do here? I put another coefficient 2 down. So update my tally. So that means I've got another AL and three more CLs like that. Okay. So I update my tally with one more aluminium and three more chlorines. And now you can see I don't have enough aluminiums on the left or chlorines on the left. So let's update aluminium by putting two AL, 
unpack it and then update my tally here and then do the same with chlorine two is not enough so let's get rid of that two and make it three okay so unpack again put another cl there or another two cls update my tally and bish bash bosh we're all good i've got two aluminiums left and right and six chlorines left and right and my balanced equation is two al plus three cl2 makes two al cl3 so the thing here to watch out for is that sometimes your first coefficient isn't going to be right so just keep on working round and round keep working round and round this uh, this spiral part here and just keep going round those steps until you make it balanced okay so we're going to look at a couple of advanced balancing tricks now and one is the idea of multiplying by halves now as we go through this, I'm going to go a bit faster, so I'm not going to do the boxes. I'm not going to do the unpacking, because I'm going to assume that you're getting a bit more confident with this now. Um, so let's have a look at the problem we've got here. So this is ethane, which is a type of um, gas that is often burned as a fuel, reacting with oxygen to make carbon dioxide and water. So let's start with my tally. So I've got C's, H's and O's. On the left, I've got two C's. On the right, I've got one. On the left, I've got six H's, one, two, three, four, five, six. And on the right, I've got two. And on the left, I've got two O's. And on the right, I've got one, two, three. Okay, so let's start trying to balance this. Start in the easy place with our carbons. I've got two on the left, only one on the right. So let's put a coefficient two in place, okay? Update my tally. So now I've got two carbons on the left and another two oxygens on the right, okay? But the carbon at least is good. What about the hydrogen? I've got six on the left, only two on the right. So three times two would give me six on the right as well. So if I put a coefficient three in front of H2O, update my hydrogens. So I've got six hydrogens on the left now and another two on the right. So now I've got seven oxygens right, but only two left. Now, this is where our little trick comes in. This is the idea of multiplying by halves. So, let's think about this. I could put a three and a half there, because three and a half lots of O2 would be sevens, seven, o, uh, seven oxygens. But the trouble is we know we can't really have um, fractions in a balanced equation. So, what we can do is once we get to this stage, and if you find yourself needing a half, get to this stage, and then we just multiply everything by the denominator of that half. So we double everything. So I make the C2H6 gets doubled to 2C2H6. 3.5O2 becomes 7. 4CO2 becomes 4. And 3CO2, so 3H2O, becomes 6. And that will leave us with our balanced equation, 2C2H6. Add 7O2 makes 4CO2 plus 6H2O. And let's check that that works. Carbons on the left, 2 times 2 would be 4. On the right, 4 times 1 is 4. Hydrons on the left, 2 times 6 is 12. Um, and on the right, 6 times 2 is 12. And oxygens on the left, 7 times 2 is 14. And... 4 times 2 is 8, plus 6 times 1 gives you 14 on the right as well. So that little multiplying trick, if you find yourself needing a half as the last step to balance, put it in and then just double everything. Now the second advanced technique we're going to look at is called uh, chunking. Now chunking is useful when you have um, groups of atoms that appear unchanged on the left and the right sides of an equation. So we might often in an equation see NO3 on the left and on the right. Some quite often we might see sulfate SO4 on the left and on the right. And in this case we've got the NO3 representing nitrate. So we've got some nitrate in that nitric acid there and we've got some nitrate in this aluminium nitrate here. So what we're going to do with this chunking is rather than breaking that nitrate down into N's and O's, it's easier sometimes to balance it if we just leave it as it is, completely unchanged. Now you might see there's this hydroxide here. Now the hydroxide only appears on the left and not the right. So we are not going to do our chunking technique with hydroxide, just with the nitrate. So let's, let's see how this works in practice. Okay, so let's do our tally chart first of all. So um, hydrogens, on the left we've got one. 
plus the hydroxide hydrogens here, which makes a total of four on the left. And on the right, we've got two there and no others. So we just put two like that. Um, next, we've got our nitrate. Now, there's one nitrate on the left. So I'm going to go um, NO3 for nitrate, one on the left, um, and three on the right in that aluminium nitrate because of the brackets. Um, let's move along to aluminium. Nice and easy, the aluminium. There's one on the left, one on the right. Um, with uh, the oxygen, now we've got oxygen in the hydroxide. We're going to ignore this oxygen there because that's already accounted for in our nitrate. So we're just going to think about there being three oxygens on the left. And on the right, again, we're going to ignore that nitrate oxygen there because that's already accounted for in the nitrate. So we're just going to think about this one oxygen there. Okay. So how does this help us balance? Um, it just makes it much easier where things are out of whack. So um, you can see, for example, as we walk, as we go down um, with the hydrogens, there is not enough hydrogen on the right. Um, so what we can do is we can, um, in fact, we'll come back to that. Um, the most obvious one is the nitrate. So the nitrate, there's three on the right and only one on the left. So if we put a three in front of our uh, nitric acid there, that gives us three nitrates on the left plus another two hydrogens. Um, now, our nitrates balance, our hydrogens really out of whack. So let's see what we end up doing with that. Um, there are six hydrogens on the left, only two on the right. So if we put three in front of water on the right, that now gives us another four hydrogens. So now there's six left, six right, and another two oxygens. So one, two, and then suddenly we're all balanced. Um, and so what you can see here is that by chunking that nitrate like that, it really made this whole process a lot simpler because it directed our attention to what was the most useful thing to start uh, by balancing. Okay, so that's it. Really well done if you got to the end. Balancing equations is difficult, so do look back through this a few times if you need to.